Hello and welcome to the 12th broadcast of the Nerdflix podcast. We have a very packed episode today. Today's topic is the Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World franchise covering Jurassic Park, The Lost World, Jurassic Park 3, Jurassic World, and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. We'll even talk a little bit about the next and possibly final Jurassic World movie coming up in 2022. So let's get started. Hey, it's time for Nerdflix! Podcast. One thing I'd like to mention before we get started is that 2020 has moved a lot of releases for new and upcoming movies. And one somewhat good thing about that is that we're going to get a release of a bunch of good movies all at once all in the same year. And some of the notable upcoming movies that seem to be pretty good is going to be the second Venom movie, Space Jam 2, Another Marvel movie called Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. We have the third Ghostbusters movie coming off of the original Ghostbusters films called Ghostbusters Afterlife. And then we have Black Widow. And those are just some of the cool ones. But one of my favorite things that's going to come out this year, one thing I'm most excited about this year is Spider-Man No Way Home. I talked about this a few episodes back when they first announced the big release. I believe that was the Mandalorian episode. There's been rumors about Tobey Maguire's return, Andrew Garfield's return. There's been a lot of commotion about this, a lot of rumors. But either way, it looks like it's going to be a really good movie. Also, a Boba Fett series coming out in December as well. So we got some pretty cool things coming up. Okay, so the first movie we're talking about today is Jurassic Park. This movie is excellent. This movie has to be one of the greatest films of all time. And it's based on a book. Some people know that. I'd say maybe about half of the people know that it's based on a book. But the, the book does have some differences. I personally have not read the book. I've heard about it, I've heard about the differences, I do want to read it, I have a friend who's read the book, and he's told me some cool things about the differences, including the fact that two of the most main characters, John Hammond and Ian Ian Malcolm, both die in the book, but not in the movie, and I really never knew that. Jurassic Park is about this guy who wants to create a, basically a theme park like a zoo, but with dinosaurs, by genetically cloning them from DNA found in mosquitoes that have been frozen in tree sap, basically. And, of course, it doesn't really go well. And at least he doesn't get to open the park. He brings in a bunch of people, a bunch of mostly dinosaur experts and a lawyer, to come and look at the park to see if they like it. And, well, it doesn't go well. The first person to get eaten in that bunch is the lawyer when he runs away from the dinosaur, and the dinosaur eats him while he's in a porta potty And... Everything just goes to chaos, and there's a lot of climactic parts, and it's very suspenseful and action-packed. At one point, some kid gets tased by a, um electric fence, and the, there's, of course, the raptors, which are really the main problem of this movie. There's this guy who's trying to steal dinosaur DNA so he can auction it off, and it's really good. This movie was huge, and not only was it huge, it was g- very groundbreaking. This movie featured groundbreaking technology and CGI, like nothing you've ever seen before in a movie. Since this movie is strictly based on dinosaurs, they actually had paleontologists and dinosaur experts on set of the movie for reference. They had them check everything. They had them talk with the um, CGI crew about different movements of the dinosaur. And they, because they wanted to make the dinosaurs as realistic as possible. Like I mentioned last week, 
with the Batman movie going through a lot of big names to see who would play Batman, this movie also went through a lot of big names to see who'd play who, including, once again, Harrison Ford, but this time Harrison Ford trying out for the role of Alan Grant in this movie. And also, they wanted Sean Connery to play John Hammond. If you've seen this movie and you know it well and you like this movie, you know obviously obviously that there's a hurricane that's going on most of the movie. Well, did you know that while filming the movie, there was an actual hurricane going on? They were filming on location in Hawaii, and they had the largest hurricane they ever had while filming Jurassic Park. So there was a legit hurricane going on during the filming. The next movie we'll talk about the sequel to Jurassic Park is The Lost World Jurassic Park. This movie was also pretty good. I really don't feel it was as good as the original. It's always hard to beat the original, but it was a very good film. It w was very different from the first one, and I found it a very good film. This movie features mainly Ian, Ma Ian Malcolm as the main character, Jeff Goldblum's character, going back to the island, and we find out about the original plans for Jurassic Park being on the mainland, and now this big company wants to bring them back to the mainland, the dinosaurs, to be basically on the mainland as a new attraction, and Ian Malcolm is trying to stop this. Throughout the movie, we have some very suspenseful scenes, such as a trailer that's been pushed by a T-Rex over the edge of a cliff, and it's just barely dangling, and all our heroes are dangling in this trailer. We have... Ian Malcolm ending up with a baby T-Rex that he needs to return to the T-Rex's mother. And we end up on the mainland with a T-Rex on the mainland. Now, I thought this was very original and very entertaining. Now, obviously, Steven Spielberg directed the first Jurassic Park movie. But after making Jurassic Park and Schindler's List at basically the same time, he was taking a break from directing for a while. So he wasn't going to direct The Lost World. So Universal was looking for a person to direct this movie. And one of the top people on their list was this guy named Joe Johnson, the director of classics such as Honey, Honey I Shrunk the Kids. But he didn't end up directing this film because he was at a tie between... The Lost World and Jumanji, another classic film starring Robin Williams that was being made at that time. And he ended up not taking the part to direct The Lost World so he could go and direct Jumanji. I mentioned the trailer scene in The Lost World. I find it a very iconic scene and very memorable. But how do you film a scene like that? Well, actually, they weren't filming on location in Hawaii like most of the movies. They were filming on a concrete structure in, Orla in Orlando, and they had a 12-ton trailer dangling from this concrete structure in the middle of Orlando. And they had all the acting stars and stunt doubles dangling from this trailer so they could film the scene. In this movie, Steven Spielberg has a slight cameo. So slight, you probably never saw it. So slight, if you went back and watched the movie, you might not even be able to catch it. That's how hard it is to see, but it is there if you look close enough. In one of the scenes where we see a TV set showing CNN covering a story about the boat transporting the T-Rex, we see reflections of the people watching it. If you look very closely, the two people watching it are Jeff Goldblum and Steven Spielberg eating popcorn. It's hard to see, and it's hard. It's easy to miss, but it's there. The last movie in the Jurassic Park series is Jurassic Park 3. No subtitle, it's just 3. It was also a decent film. Probably my least favorite out of the first two, just because things tend to get lesser down from the first movie as they go along. But that's how it is for every movie. The original, obviously, is still the best. But this movie did a decent job, and I did very much so like it. And overall, I thought they did a good job for the third movie. This movie mainly features Alan Grant, the paleontologist from the first movie. He did not have an appearance in The Lost World, so this is the first time we're seeing him since Jurassic Park. 
he is tricked into going back into the island for a search party for this kid and his uncle. He ends up in this big dilemma with being stranded on the island, and they have trouble with a Spinosaurus that basically just follows them around the entire movie. And they end up, at the end, finding the kid, not the uncle, the uncle got eaten, but finding the kid and making it back home safely. In this movie, we see Alan Grant return to the island because at the beginning of the movie, he is answering questions on the mainland um, for his paleontologist career, mostly about Jurassic Park because that's, of course, what people know him from. And he basically hasn't been to the park in years. But in the original idea for this script, he was supposed to be living on the island with dinosaurs. The idea was that Alan was told he couldn't return and he wanted to see the dinosaurs, and so he snuck onto the island and was living in the trees with these dinosaurs. But they thought that after all of these, um, his experiences in the first movie, maybe he wouldn't want to go and, like, live there. So they ended up cutting that. In this movie, it features a younger character named Billy. He looks to be maybe about 20 years old, and he kind of follows Alan around the entire movie. Well, he carries this very big and old bag around with him, mostly the entire movie, and he calls it his lucky bag, saying that this bag once saved his life. When he fell and the strap of the bag caught onto something and saved him basically from his death. Well, this is a subtle reference to a scene in The Lost World where one of the characters in the trailer is wearing a bag with a strap around her shoulder. And when she falls in that trailer scene, the strap catches to something and saves her from her death. So this is a fun little reference back to that movie. Alan, Alan Grant's character seems to have a very subtle Indiana Jones connection. In fact, at some points, it's not very subtle, and it's just a straight-up reference. At one point in this movie, he is on the airplane, and he takes a very Indiana Jones-style fedora off his head and puts it over his eyes and puts his legs up to go to sleep. This is the very same way that Indiana Jones sleeps on the plane in Temple of Doom with his legs up on a chair and his fedora over his eyes. And so this is a very not-so-subtle reference to the Indiana Jones franchise. But also, it's kind of a reference back to the fact that Harrison Ford originally auditioned for the role of Alan Grant. So it's fun to occasionally hint to these things. The next movie we'll talk about is 2015's Jurassic World. This movie was okay. It wasn't as good as the first three, you know, like I keep saying. Definitely not as good as the original. But it was fine. I liked it. It set up some other cooler movies, and overall, it was pretty decent. This movie introduces Chris Pratt's character, Owen, and Claire and Claire's nephews, and they basically are reopening Jurassic World. Well, now calling it Jurassic World, previously called Jurassic Park. That part, I was a little iffy about, why would you reopen something like that? And at first, it seems to be a total copy or remake of the first Jurassic Park. But there is one twist to this that sets it apart from Jurassic Park. One, they've opened the park to people. The first Jurassic Park was never opened for people to come in. And two, they have something they call the Adominus Rex. A T-Rex, or not a T-Rex, but a dinosaur... They genetically created, that's no previous dinosaur. This dinosaur was strictly created using a mixture of all the DNA they had from cloning the other dinosaurs. This is a man-made dinosaur. And this movie has this Dominus Rex being a total problem throughout the entire movie and basically a huge killing machine. And that's pretty much the plot of this movie. And well, of course... You know, everything else goes wrong in the park, just like Jurassic Park. Most of the fan theories we hear about these days are theories based off the Star Wars or Marvel Cinematic Universe. We never really hear about anything outside of that as much as we do Star Wars and Marvel. 
But there are some interesting theories about the Jurassic World slash Jurassic Park series, such as Owen being in Jurassic Park. Chris Pratt's character Owen makes his debut in Jurassic World, but this possibly may not be the first time we see this character. In Jurassic Park, we open up with Alan Grant out in the desert searching for fossils, and he finds some of a raptor. And this kid shows up and asks, what's so great about raptors? And Alan Grant tells him about all these scary and cool things about raptors. And this kid seems to have learned a lot about velociraptors. Well, Owen in Jurassic World is basically a velociraptor expert. He trains them and he has a very strong connection with the raptors in the movie. So it's theorized that the kid in Jurassic Park is Owen from Jurassic World. In this movie, of course, there is a T-Rex involved. But do you realize that the T-Rex in these movies could quite possibly be the same T-Rex throughout all of these movies? In the first Jurassic Park movie, we see the T-Rex. In The Lost World, we see the T-Rex. In Jurassic Park 3, we briefly see some T-Rexes. In Jurassic World, we see the T-Rex, and we see some T-Rexes in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. But, it could be the same T-Rex throughout these entire series of movies. In the first Jurassic Park movie, we see this T-Rex get attacked by Velociraptors, and get three nasty claw marks right below his jaw, right on his neck. And, you can clearly see these scars in Jurassic World. You can it's clearly visible these three claw scars on its neck throughout these movies. So it could very well be the same T-Rex. Although Ian Malcolm does not make an appearance in Jurassic World, there is some reference to him, including a book someone is holding on the way to Jurassic World called God Created Dinosaurs by Dr. Ian Malcolm. And that's a pretty cool reference back to one of my favorite characters from Jurassic Park. The next movie and final movie we'll cover today is Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. This movie was pretty good. I thought it was better than Jurassic World. It's probably my favorite out of the Jurassic World series. In fact, if I had to rank them, I'd put this before Jurassic World and maybe even before Jurassic Park 3. This was an excellent film. This movie is about a volcano ab about to erupt on the island where the dinosaurs are, so they will have to evacuate the dinosaurs. Throughout this movie, we have problems in this facility where the dinosaurs are being kept. This guy tries to auction off some of the dinosaurs, and it's pretty action-packed. And at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, in case you haven't seen the movie and you want to see the movie, you probably shouldn't listen to the rest of this podcast. But um, at the end of the movie, all the dinosaurs get released into the mainland, and now everyone just lives amongst the dinosaurs, and that is how this movie ends. In this movie, we feature a scene in which Blue, one of the velociraptors, is injured, and the main characters have to try and help Blue. Well, this was not CGI. Blue in this scene was actually a puppet slash animatronic, which took over 12 people to control. In one scene, Owen is lurking around in a containment unit where the T-Rex is being held and the T-Rex is sleeping. Well, as the T-Rex starts to wake up, the T-Rex opens her big mouth and Owen jumps right through it and does a little roll and out of that containment unit. Well, doing that dive through the mouth of the T-Rex was none other than Chris Pratt's idea. The actor who played this character came up with the idea for that specific thing. It was not scripted, but Chris Pratt thought it'd be a cool thing, and it was. I've mentioned some onset injuries in past movies I've covered, and this one isn't too big, but it is interesting. When Chris Pratt does the stunt where he has to dive through the T-Rex's mouth, like I just mentioned, that was not a stunt double. That was Chris Pratt doing it himself. Well, this part where the camera was angled, it had him diving through, rolling out of the crate containment unit that the T-Rex is in, and around to the side of it so the T-Rex can't see him. Well, when filming this, Chris Pratt would come out of it, 
and he almost ducked down before he came to the around to the side, which the duck down off frame made it look like a a stunt double was bouncing out of the scene for Chris Pratt to jump in for the close up shot, and that he didn't actually do the stunt, so he sh he can't go out of frame for this, or it will look bad. So it takes many takes, but he finally does it. But he ends up bashing his elbow up against it. It's not a big injury on set, but it's interesting because he did his own stunt and he couldn't make it look like a stunt double did it. So a volcano is erupting on the island where the dinosaurs are, which is why they are evacuating them. But the volcano did not surprisingly come into play until this movie. Actually, in the novel Jurassic Park is based on, it is noted that the island has a volcano on it, but that never came into play until this movie. In one scene, as the volcano is erupting, these two characters are in this little underground area, and lava is seeping through all sides. Now, of course, most of that is CGI, but when they filmed it, they wanted to have an effect of real lava because, of course, lava glows and fire glows, so it would affect the lighting. So separately, they actually did this really cool, somewhat strange trick to give that lighting of the lava and fire. Of course, they must have done this without actors on set and digitally put it in because this would have been way too dangerous to do it while the actors are also acting at the same time. What they did in the ceiling, they had 12 dispensers for this concoction to come out of just randomly at any moment. And what this concoction was, it was cat litter filled with this flammable substance, because cat litter is supposed to be absorbent. So they put this flammable substance in the in the cat litter, and as it squirted out, it would ignite. And these big fireballs would rain down from the ceiling. And it had this super cool fire lava effect and this extra source of light of lighting. I know I said that was the last movie we'll cover, and this next one isn't technically a movie yet. I am talking about the next Jurassic World movie, supposedly the final in the series. But, who knows, maybe in a couple years they'll come up with another kind of spin-off to it. I believe they already have some kind of spin-off show on Netflix called Jurassic World Camp, Camp Cretaceous. And, but this next movie is supposed to be the final movie for Jurassic World, at least. This movie is set to come out on June 10th, 2022, so that would be basically next summer. This movie is going to be called Jurassic World Dominion. It's possibly going to have the return of Ian Malcolm and Alan Grant. Now, there are some slight tra trailers going around. It's hard to tell what's official and what's fan-made and what is exactly true, but it seems to be that Alan Grant and Ian Malcolm are v returning for this movie. And it does seem to be a really good film, and it looks like it's going to be good. Okay, and now I have my friend Nathan on the phone again. Nathan, welcome back to the show. Hello again. Now, as you know, today's episode is the Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World movies. Now, the first thing is, which do you prefer, the park movies or the world movies? Let's see. Oh, man, that's hard. I like the world ones because they're more... Like, darker, but the park ones, I mean, those are really good. I have to go with park. Yeah. Usually the original films are usually better than its sequels. Yeah. Well, um, what is your favorite movie out of those three park movies? Probably the first one. Well, yeah. Now, which do you prefer, Jurassic World or Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom? Fallen Kingdom. What did you like about Fallen Kingdom? It had more horror aspect. Yeah, I found Fallen Kingdom more interesting and fun to watch yeah. than Jurassic World. Because, like, yeah. Jurassic World, it wasn't the smartest idea to reopen the park. Yeah. Now, what do you think about the ending to Fallen Kingdom? That's, that's pretty big. That was great. I loved it. Uh, when I saw it in the theaters, it, I didn't expect it. Oh, so you went and saw the movie in theaters? Yep. See, I, I didn't see that one in theaters. I um, I waited a little bit until after it got on DVD, but you know, still the same movie. Yeah. But um, 
Now, you know, there's another movie coming out pretty soon, I believe, June 10th, 2022, called Jurassic World Dominion. What are your feelings on that? I can't wait. It does seem to be pretty good. There, It's hard to tell what's an official trailer and what's a fan-made trailer. They don't really have a real trailer up yet, but supposedly they might have Ian Malcolm and Alan Grant returning. <sighs> can't wait. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But, um... So this movie is supposedly the final movie in the Jurassic World slash Park series. And I guess it has to be because they really backed themselves into a corner when they released all the dinos at the end of Fallen Kingdom, right? Yeah. So there's really, yeah, there's really nowhere else they can go. Now, what do you think uh, is, what do you think is going to happen next after all the dinosaurs have been released into the world? Kill them. Yeah, it does sound like something they do in those movies. But either way, this next movie does look good. Yeah, I can't wait. Alright, well thanks for being on. Yeah, no problem. Bye. Okay, that is it for this episode of the Nerdflix podcast. Join us next week when we cover the Back to the Future films. Thanks to my friend Nathan for being on the show again, and we will see you next week on Nerdflix. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.